Okay, good evening and welcome to our school committee meeting of this Wednesday, June 5th, 2019. It is 7 p.m. I'd like to call our meeting to order. Could we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to remind everyone that we are being broadcast live as well as being recorded for future rebroadcast. Um, first up, we have our student representative. I think we have a new student representative tonight. I will even introduce him. Excellent. Thank you. So for the past year, we were fortunate to have Natalie Champagne as our student rep. Um, Unfortunately, Natalie graduated, so she doesn't want to come back and do this anymore. Um, but fortunately, like, I happen to be talking to mom, like, oh, I'm going to miss having Natalie there. And it turns out Natalie has a brother, William, who will be just as great, and mom wants to keep coming to the first 15 minutes of meetings. So, <laughs> let me introduce Will Champagne, and he's got some stuff that he wants to talk about. Let's see how he does. Great. All right, Welcome, so um, last week we had graduation for the seniors. On Thursday was the Bangaloreate, and Friday was graduation. And that summed up the seniors' high school careers. Uh, this or tomorrow, the girls have a softball tournament, and it's at four in Littleton. Uh, exams start Friday, and they go into next week, and they end on Wednesday. And there's two per day. Um, eighth grade step up day is also on Friday, and so they'll be experiencing high school. And uh, the last day is next Thursday, and that'll sum up our school. Yeah. And that's all I got for now. <laughs> Good job, man. Well, welcome, Will. We look forward to uh, more bits from you going into next year. Thank you. Looking forward, and I, I got to talk to you at some point because I, I see your shirt there. My son's also a competitive gymnast, so I, I've already heard your name um, from some of your neighbors in the past. So really? I got to get the two of you together at some yeah. point. <laughs> so, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. much. Good job. Thank you. Sorry, Mom. Just remember, there's thousands of people watching. <laughs> Um, at this point, uh, we have our public comment and communication section. Um, the school committee welcomes public comment on items that are uh, within the scope of the school committee's uh, responsibilities, but not on our agenda tonight. Anyone here for anything not on our agenda? Seeing none, we will move on to any old business or new business the board would like to cover. Seeing none, move on to Mr. Mainzer's report. One thing that was not on there, but I just wanted to at least bring to the public's attention uh, the senior week activities that we've just concluded and what a, what a nice week it was. Uh, as William just mentioned, you had senior night with the scholarships and the awards and the recognitions as well as the teacher appreciation and the, the dreaded slideshow from back when they all had braces and all that, that stuff. That was great. Then we had, uh, they had a, a really nice cookout on the Wednesday. Um, the kids came parading through the three schools. They really enjoyed that. Um, the kids on the other end of the, of the uh, hallway were all excited, and, and the kids walking through were excited. Um, a lot of comments about the little gifts that they got from the primary school kids. The little, the little kids are as cute as can be, um, and how nice that was. Um, I would like to uh, then also, obviously, we had baccalaureate on Thursday, which is always a, a, a nice event. The chorus always sounds great in St. Dennis Church, and uh, the speeches were really wonderful. And then graduation outside was was really a wonderful event. Um, there's something about the bagpiper and the long and winding road as they come down, um, and we get fortunate with a, a really good night, which uh, unfortunately leaves Annie Hayes and mm -hmm. Mrs. Hayes in trouble for next year because we had a good year this year. As, as history would say, there's a real good chance we'll be indoors next year, but hopefully we'll have good weather. Uh, thank you to uh, Josh and, and Desi and, and Jared Stan for the graduation and, all the, and the graduation committee. Uh, and thank you to the advisors, Ed and uh, Carolyn Brainy, Ed LaChapelle and Carolyn Brainy, for all the work that they did over the four years, and uh, to the, uh, the faculty and everybody for what was a wonderful senior week. So I would be remiss if I didn't mention that. So that was that part of it. And now we're back to the final grind. Um, I think there's a lot of people that are limping to the finish line right about now, including students as well as teachers, and clearly, without question, a number of administrators are just trying to get to that finish line. So 
uh, but we'll get there. Um, if I could ask nurse, uh, nurse leader, uh, Kathy Campbell, to join us. Uh, she's going to talk a little bit about the delegation of medication and the documents that we need to sign. Um, it's not a policy change or anything of the sort. It's, it's, it's simply that, um, um, well, Kathy can explain that piece of it, but, we all, but there are some documents that we do need to sign so that she can go out and get trained. So, Kathy, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, tonight I am here to present to you our application for the registration for the delegation of prescription medications. Um, we have received approval for this registration every two years as far back as I can remember. As nurse manager of this program, I am required to attend a medication delegation training ser service every five years, and I will be attending again this year on the last day of school instead of being at school. Um, our current registration runs out this June 30th. Okay. The Code of Massachusetts Regulation, CMR 105, specifically relates to the application of registration. It reads, the main purpose of this regulation is to provide minimum standards for the safe and proper administration of prescription medications to our students in the Commonwealth's public schools. This regulation and approved registration with DPH permits our school nurses to delegate and train unlicensed school personnel to administer medications that have been prescribed to particular students. This registration only covers two types of prescription medication, enteral or oral prescriptions, and then the EpiPen or epinephrine autoinjector. In the case of epinephrine, this only applies to students who have a diagnosis of anaphylaxis and also who have a valid prescription for the epinephrine. An ep epinephrine. In Douglas, we are fortunate to have at least one nurse in every school building, so we have never had to use this delegation. However, there is always the possibility that we may not have a nurse substitute for some field trip or a before or after school program. That's where this authority of delegation would be of great use. This insurance policy ensures that all students who will require a prescription medication during the school day will be able to attend safely. If a non-licensed staff member takes on this medication delegation role and responsibility, this will be communicated with the parent guardian. This collaboration among our school physician, Dr. Scirocco, the school nurse, the school, and the parent guardian provides for the optimal safety of our students. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, so I don't think Kathy, we've, we've ever had a situation where we've done this as of Correct. As of yet. Uh, I know that it's been brought up on a number of occasions uh, at school committee because of the, the documentation that you need. But I don't think we've ever had a field trip where we've actually, actually done yeah. the delegation piece of it. Um, so th what, what Kathy's plan, right, exactly, <laughs> what Kathy's plan is, is, to, is basically to train somebody in uh, each of the buildings and in, in, if, if possible to train, for example, at the elementary school, train somebody from grade two grade three, grade four, grade five at the same time. Same thing at the primary school, somebody from pre-K, K and one. Yep. The high school's you know, kind of different because there's no real um, right. classes the way that works. The same thing at the middle school, six, seven, and eight. If, if we can do that, great. Get, get a number of people trained, one person from each grade, so that when they did go on a field trip, we would have somebody who was certified and, and mm -hmm. has been trained. Yes, and we do train all of our staff members in epinephrine administration on the first day of school. Correct. Yes. So only you have to go to the training on the last day of school? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then you're responsible for coming back and disseminating that to the rest of Tra our nursing staff and then to delegates beyond that? Correct. Okay. Yeah, so so she, uh, Kathy will become the trainer to train the trainees yeah. and, 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 and go from there. And um, uh, we'll, we'll, once once we have a complete list, we'll certainly share that information with you guys as to who's been trained and, and so forth. And only every five years if you do this? You have to go to the med delegation class every five years. And okay. the registration is every two years. Okay. Correct, yeah. All right, I have a question just because of the whole epinephrine thing. Yes. Um, from what you read, you said the student has to have a valid prescription and a diagnosis. Yes. Knowing that a number of kids who have their first episode have it at school without a diagnosis, what happens in that case? Then the nurse would have to make the assessment okay. and give the epinephrine. Okay. And any medicine that involves an assessment requires a nurse. Okay. So if they were away on a field trip and there was no one there, they'd have to, they would have to do a 911 right. Right. at that point. And that would be part of the, the understanding. And 911 always after the epinephrine. Yeah. We know that, right, Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> Too well. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. So, so there's some documents here. I, I, okay. I can hang on to them. I, I need to sign them. You'll need to sign them. So do you want me to hang on and, and we can do it at the end of the meeting and sure. I can bring them back to Kathy tomorrow morning? Sounds good. Sounds good. If that works, if everybody's in agreement with it. Mm -hmm. okay. That works. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. So Kathy, I'll bring these back tomorrow. Thank you, Thank you very right. much for coming out and presenting. Good. Thank you. All right. The only thing we have to do is remember to sign these before we leave. <laughs> <laughs> At my advanced stage, state of age, I might forget it. All right. So the, the next thing that we have in the re superintendent's report is the uh, annual improvement plans by, by school. Um, we do, Mr. Delaney um, is not here today. He actually participated in our admin meeting by, via Skype or FaceTime or whatever it was. And he volunteered to do so again tonight, mm -hmm. to which I said, well, I'll do my very best to present the middle school improvement plan um, tonight to you. And if there's our, as I said, if there's our, any drastic questions with the middle school, you can, I can bring them back to Brian and we can see if we can get the information back out. But I would ask for the twins and also Mrs. Sosha to come up yeah. to the, um, <laughs> to the uh, front of the room. We'll ask Mrs. Sosha to maybe sit in the middle to break up the... Um, <laughs> A lot of purple. The Lavender Nero. Uh, which is interesting. I, I worked with, with Desi here for a number of years, and it would always inevitably be... We, two or three times a week we would end up coming outfit. in yeah. the same outfit, you know, <laughs> just a little bit off of a shade. I don't know if it still happens or not, but... A couple of times. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, with the blue on Monday is still a thing, so... Yeah. yeah, most everybody's a blue on Monday as well. <laughs> so thank you very much, Mrs. Sosha, for taking one for the team to give us a little bit of color differential. <laughs> <laughs> Have you decided, did you flip a coin, are we going top to bottom? Or? We're just going, if you sit here, you go first. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Elementary school's up. <laughs> All right, so this is my first year doing a school improvement plan in Douglas, so I've been working with Mr. Maines to kind of get the formatting right and everything. Um, I think this first goal is our, our key goal, and they all kind of tie back to this one. Um, but our first goal is 70% of our students will be proficient on MCAS and ELA and, and math um, by the end of the school year, and we're going to utilize small group instruction, active engagement, cooperative learning, and we're also going to analyze a lot of data uh, to help us guide our instruction. So those are kind of, that's, that's the, you'll see some common trends throughout the different goals. Um, currently, we have 67% of our students proficient in ELA, so that's not a huge jump there. Um, the math is where we need to see some improvement. We've really been working on that currently this year, and we're going to continue that on through next year. Um, we don't know where we fell this year yet, um, so that's the 2018 MCAS data there. We don't have 2019 yet, um, but our goal is to get those. Um, uh, honestly, we should have 70% of our students in Douglas proficient, so um, we might not meet that goal the first year, but that's going to be our ongoing goal um, to get to eventually. Um, if you look at the second goal, it's on the professional development that's going to help us get us there. So um, we're going to work as, I have a building leadership team that I work with on a monthly basis. Um, we have our, our grade level teams that we work with, and with those teams we're going to determine what um, areas we need to focus on and provide professional development through our staff meetings, our um, professional development days, um, during our common planning time, those kinds of, of areas. Um, and then obviously I'm going to be in classrooms checking to see what's being implemented and, and give feedback to staff and um, make sure that we are um, tracking our progress as we go so we can keep determining what, what areas we need to focus on. Um, so the second one's on the professional development. The third goal is on scheduling. Um, one thing that I've noticed since I've been here is that our schedules hinder a lot of what we could do, um, which is, you know, we have special education, we have Title I, um, we have teacher prep time, we have all those different pieces, and we haven't found a cohesive schedule. Each group kind of has done their things independently, and because of that, we kind of have a choppy schedule throughout the day, um, and we haven't maximized the instructional time that we have with our kids. So one of my goals this summer is to really sit down. I've already been working with Mrs. Sosha, and with Mr. Maines, with the teachers at the school, um, to kind of streamline our, our processes so that we can have a, a better schedule that better needs to meet needs of our kids, so that we have support in the classrooms when we need the support in the classrooms, um, so that that students that need help with reading are getting that help during their reading time. They're not missing out on other core instructional time. We have a lot of that happening right now that we need to we need to kind of fix. So um, that's that's a big one that I'm working. That's just more of a summer goal um, to work on those schedules. But I do think that'll have a positive impact on our student learning as we go through the year. And in my last goal is on community involvement. Um, we already have a great 
community in, in Douglas that's already involved in the school. Um, I need to get better with communication as a school, so I need, we're going to do better with our, our biweekly newsletters um, and then continuing to provide opportunities for our parents to be involved um, during with, with the education, whether that's an evening event where it's showing here's what you can do with kids in math, here's what you can do with kids in, me in reading at home, um, whether it's just inviting you in for our lip sync battle or whatever it is, um, parents in school need to have constant collaboration and communication. Um, and so the more we can get our families at our schools, um, the, the more successful we're going to be as a school, the more successful our kids are going to be. So um, that's another goal of mine personally that we're going to work on as we go through the year. You guys have any questions on any of those? It's kind of a brief summary there. I, I would just make a maybe a, an ask or request on this last one, and, and probably yep. goes for all the schools. I, I'd love to see some some goals around specifically engaging with the local newspapers to see Douglas in the local newspapers more. Yep. We know that s some of our our favorite competitors, I guess, are there <laughs> quite a bit, um, and I, I I think we could be doing more as as an administration um, to have ourselves out there. And if it means writing the articles ourselves, but sending pictures into them. They're always looking for content, I think, so it's just a matter of, of getting it to them. So. I can definitely add that to the last one. That's you know, easy, what, what's interesting is yeah. we talked about that today in, in our yep. admin meeting again, yep. is that in, in years gone by, we had, we had a direct connection, and that person would come out, and we could, we could, they could do some interviews. And yep. uh, the last couple of years, that simply has fallen by the wayside. And so you're right. The only way in which you get something in there is, is, to, is to write something up. And, I think it's a local resident, uh, Ms. Spencer. I think, I don't forget when she works for but um i know i've engaged with her on, on some previous um issues we might be able to engage her on, on if, some if things you can send me that information but, yeah. i'll make sure that we we, we reach out to that person but that's but, that has been kind of the the, the issue yeah. uh the, the the group that you might be somewhat referring to as <coughs> yeah. someone who yeah i know they've got an entire pr them up there them, you know so yeah so i i, I get i get up, that it's not as easy for us to do that fold. yeah um but I, I just oh, think, we can do more. Yeah. You're right. And so, we did talk today also. And this would be good to have it down like as, as an actual goal. I know we, we kind of talked about it in the past. So I think it would be nice to see it as an actual goal for us right. or, or, or you know, objective within your goals yeah. um, to have so many you know, mentions in the, in the local papers throughout the year, however you want to kind of mm -hmm. you know, frame it. We'll try to so. keep, do a little bit more focus. And we did talk a little bit about the idea of um, sort of marketing our schools. Okay. So we, um, we talked a little bit about working on that this summer to come up with a document that we can place around the town uh, also. But Mr. Villamere doesn't know this, but we kind of volunteered him to help us to maybe create an overall video that we could put online of the school year as well yeah. so um, that maybe during the summertime he can piece that together we'll send some photos and he can drop in the music and, and we can add some dialogue and we can read some of the stuff to also promote what's going on in our schools over the course of the year so a reflection on the 1819 maybe a little bit on the on the anticipation for the 1920 year to get that out there as well as a document that sort of is like a calendar of what went on throughout the district that maybe we can get out into the community as well um, yeah, and I, I, you know, I, I think you guys all do great work here, and it takes a lot of effort doing that work. So I, I understand doing the publicity part of that is, is just like, okay, you know, we've, we've spent a lot of effort on doing the work. And the publicity tends to be the last thing. Yep. Um, but, I, you know, I just love to see the, that great work getting more publicity. So if we can set aside whatever 2% of our time or effort to, to do that, I think Good it would point. be tremendous for the district. So. Yep. Yeah, like yeah, we do have a school newspaper, but it, I, it, I don't know. If it, 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 yeah. it could look at that. Yeah, if you have some yeah. advanced students in there that, that might know. want to do it as a senior project type yeah. of thing, maybe. Yep. Good. Anyone um, else? Uh, questions for Mr. Bell? I just have sort of a thought, um, and I think it's too late for the, this this year, but with regards to MCAS scores and community yeah. involvement, um, like I have over the years have sort of talked individually with my daughter's students about what she can do over the course of the summer. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a lot of like online apps that they use in school. Sometimes they're available during the summer, sometimes they're, yep. they're not. Um, last year she had a math problem a day to do. That was the first time she had had that, which mm -hmm. was awesome. But I just am thinking like, you know, a quarter of the year they're at home with us in the summertime and you know, their summer learning loss. Mm -hmm. So maybe going forward as a next year sort of thing, uh, there could be more of an organized, like school-wide idea for what could just be put out, you know, not and, mandatory. And I but do know that e each grade puts out um, a reading, summer yeah. reading packet that they yeah. do. Um, math, I think last year they dabbled with it and they didn't have a lot of success with it. Right. But um, I don't know that I want to give 
hours of homework and all that, but I do think right. providing opportunities for families to work with their kids on things that are going to help move them forward is a great idea. Right. And so we talked about it at our faculty meeting on Monday, and I think we're just going to do the summer reading packets this year, but it is something that we probably need to look at because I, I don't know if they're where I want them yet. They're, they're kind of right now they're big packets and I want it to be simple for parents to sit down and spend 30 minutes with their kid every day or not every day if they don't want to um, but it helps with that summer regression prevent that from happening so and I'm thinking if you have those um, like subscriptions to like, and, like yep. Zoe does reflex math yep. and reflex will still work through the summer I think the teachers were going to send home some information okay, letting that know because it, it, you do have access to it the <laughs> one thing we can't do um, we can't like if they're working on addition subtraction we can't bump them up to the next level when they master it those kinds of things but they do do have access to it um, just like they do right now awesome thank you yeah, we could maybe generate a list of yep. apps that are available online that, that the kids can use on at their at their own um, as, as, as a suggestion as well yeah. for math be and science you're know, just having this conversation with my son in the car <laughs> as I drive oh, practice really? like, <laughs> like I can't believe I'm going to fourth grade chair I'm like yeah neither can I he's like it's gonna be hard <laughs> you know and I'm like well if we do some work over the summer it won't be as bad you know so it's just, you know. his reaction was yeah okay dad yeah, right. yeah no he, 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 I'm, I'm like, really so looking forward to, to some like, summer work you know what yeah. we have to do it's like, fun <laughs> summer work yeah. right you can lead a horse to water but right but you know maybe if if the teachers have some information on apps that they like to use or apps that are out there like I'm thinking Khan Academy because of the high school there's always opportunities to get in to do some of those kind of things but there must be some things at the primary level that we can maybe make recommendations to and send it out yep. thank okay. you so just to make a comment about the newspapers about okay. four years ago um, everything I sent to them they put in yeah. And after that, it went downhill. Yeah. I mean, the Veterans Day program, I have tried every single year. I invite them in. We call them. We send things and nothing. So <clears throat> it's been very frustrating because you want to get those yeah. things out there, and we just haven't had any luck with it. All right, well, maybe I'll, I'll take it as a summer project to kind of get some names of editors and see if we just have a sit down mm -hmm. and talk about, you know, what 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 it'll take to get us um, right. in there, you know, so. Right, I'm um, happy to send, yeah. I have pictures. So. <laughs> There's no question yeah, about that. Yeah, just, okay. Mm. Sad. We will, uh, yeah, no, it's good to know this, if there's some mm -hmm. roadblocks out there, we'll, you know, we'll see what we can do to remove some of those for us. Mm -hmm. Great. So. Mm. Okay, so my first goal is actually a continuation uh, this is on the coding and programming and using the robotics that we started with. So the teachers have been really comfortable with the robotic mouse that we have, but not so much with the dash and dot using the iPad, that robot. Uh, we did some training, and it's a matter of feeling comfortable. You know, So they just aren't there yet. So I thought we would continue that for another year. You know, our teachers probably were not trained in any of this. Maybe some of your new teachers that we're hiring now have had some of this along the way, but you know, most of them have not had it, and it's, it's a matter of feeling comfortable. So we're gonna keep that going, and I know Scott will help us with that, and work with the teachers maybe in small groups or at a faculty meeting again, and just try to get that to be a little bit smoother. So that's why I kept that goal. The kids love it. Uh, they just absolutely love and we actually bought a few more items to go along with the robotic mouse they had a math board that you could use that ties in with the mouse um, they had a game so for a preschool level so we've added to what we had purchased before so uh, the second goal is actually a, a new goal <clears throat> we will be piloting the 2020 version of our reading program Grade one attended uh, a workshop through McGraw-Hill, and we came across that they have a 2020 version out there. And so we saw some of the materials, and grade one was really on board. We talked to the rep, and they're willing to let us pilot it. So our office foyer is full of about you know two pallets full of materials. Everything is there. They did their first round of training today. Um, teachers are totally on board because it's very much like what they're using but better so there are only some new components so the teachers aren't overwhelmed so when you do a whole new program the teachers are like oh my god there's so much to learn and and they don't have to do that their maps the curriculum maps don't really have to change much what they did was 
they took two books that they had and they combined it into one called Reading Writing Companion. And these are done by units. This is a consumable. So the students are able to write in here. They have their essential questions. They have space for the teacher to do parts in here. And the actual story is here. They read it. They reread it. They talk about evidence. They talk about the genres. So the teachers love this part. You can see, you know, they have the little road map there. So this is a brand new piece, and they're very excited to use that. So. Um, I, I think it's going to be a plus for us. Plus, we have one more year on the subscription that we have. We had purchased in 2014 from K to five. So we all have one more year to go and then we have to do something. So it's either stay with McGraw Hill or start looking at other programs and so on. So I'm glad they are on board and we have on our PD day, we hooked up with the presenter that we saw and she is from the Hill for Literacy, which is in Woburn, Mass. And she's coming out to do the afternoon PD for my staff. And that works with any reading program. She's talking about reading strategies and you know just little key things that they picked up on. They were only with her for an hour when we went to the workshop. And they came back with three or four really key points to help kids. And it was just amazing. So we got her on board and looking forward to having her in October. So that's where that second goal is coming from. Uh, the third goal is again a continuation. It's the social, oh that was the other thing I wanted to say about the reading program. They have, inc they have included social emotional learning right into the program. They've embedded stories in there on the social emotional. Um, we have feelings was one of them or the power of yet because we haven't yet accomplished this, or we haven't gotten it yet, but we will. So it's all based on their level. So they've put that right into the program, which is awesome. So you don't have to really think about that. Um, so this goal is on the social emotion, emotional program, and um, Tracy Purvis, our adjustment counselor, has been going into the classroom. She reaches 10 classrooms every single week, does a lesson with them. She has a newsletter that goes out once a month, to the parents on what the topic was, what the book was. Um, we had the last one was on breathing techniques and calming techniques and things like that. Uh, it's really been working well for us and she's been giving some of the kids who do have some you know, difficulties, some strategies to deal with it. So we want now to bring that to year two and let's do the curriculum because now the kindergartners would have had her curriculum. So now it's year two, let's advance that a little bit. So it just seemed to make sense to keep that going. Yeah, we also, um, with Kate Kilrain, um, who was retiring this week, next week, I mean, uh, when, when um, Cindy and I met with it's Jennifer Walker, right? Yes. Jennifer Walker, who, who we've hired down there. One of the things that Cindy brought up and, and I, I, I completely endorsed was her trying to get into the classrooms with some sort of regularity as well, nutrition and, mm -hmm. and health and well-being and so forth, mm -hmm. to add that as, a, as another piece into the classrooms when she's able to, which, you know, mm -hmm. her, her, hers is a little bit different than Tracy. Tracy can make a schedule where hers is an on-call type of thing. But she was 100% behind it in, in, in looking forward to adding some of that into, the, uh, into mm -hmm. the classroom as well. And the last goal is one of the favorites, so I couldn't part with it. It's Fist Bump Friday. It's our community connection. It's been going very well. Um, last year I said every month we would have somebody. Well, at the beginning of the year we had someone every week. The kids just loved it. I mean, even the preschoolers, at first they were afraid, you know, the people that, but the chief of police, he'd get down on his knee and he's fist bumping yeah. all the kids. So now it's like, if we don't have anybody, they're disappointed. They're like, isn't it Fist Bump Friday? I said, all you have is me, here you go. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. So Friday is our last fist bump Friday, so we have um, the chief bringing the, some of the policemen down. So, But the kids love it, and it does give them a sense of, I know who you are. The fire department has been really good. We've even had the highway. Um, Mr. Ferno has come with a few of his, his staff. So it's harder for them because, and even the fire, it's like I hear the sirens at 8 o'clock. I said, oh, boy, there goes my fist bump Friday with the firemen. But it happens, and it's been working, and the kids do love it. Mr. Sosha, I don't believe we've ever had a school committee fist bump. No, I have not. <laughs> More than welcome. You know, if, if perhaps the people are available to come in on a Friday morning to Absolutely. do this, this bump next year. The more the merrier. I would be happy to bring the soccer team down. Oh. Like that. 
Yes. Yeah, I was going to ask if we had a team student down there at all. Yeah. Oh, know, sure. Right, but yeah, I'd be happy to kind of let, let me know if you ever get an open slot. I'm, okay. My Fridays are free, so. Great. You know, yeah. so. Perfect. You need to fill in, let me know. I did notice, though, Mr. Sosha, that I have not been called back for Fist Bump Friday since the winter. <laughs> I, it seems like I, I got a lot of the winter opportunities. Oh, okay. But well, you're welcome. A, maybe if I can get a spring next year, it would be great. <clears throat> okay. An early Thank fall. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The kids yes. are, they, they are adorable. <laughs> they are. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it's a great program. Any questions on the goals? I promise not to add my two cents all the time, but Tracy Purvis is just awesome. And yes. the work she's doing is awesome. So if anybody's watching this and saying, well, that sounds touchy-feely, my four-year-old talks about zones of regulation and showed me mm -hmm. how to properly belly breathe. So right. it's the real deal. That's like, right. Good stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which I think is great that you're mentioning that because, Rebecca, because the appointment of the position of Jocelyn full-time at mm -hmm. the elementary school allowed this to happen mm -hmm. because if it wasn't, we were sharing her between two buildings. Yeah. And there was no, no way bias. that she would have been able to ever yeah. do any no. of that. Yeah. And no. so, um, you know, that's a direct benefit that we're seeing mm -hmm. from, the, you know, the, the, the committee approving mm -hmm. the, uh, the moving Tracy from part-time to full-time at the primary and moving somebody from part-time to full-time taking, so basically adding another person. But the benefit mm -hmm. is that we're getting great coverage at the elementary school and, and she's teaching and getting into classes, but also you, you, you're seeing it mm -hmm. in the primary school. Right. That would not have happened. It would, just wouldn't have been possible. <clears throat> no, Tracy only did once a month, and she did it during their library time, so the teachers never heard what the message was. So now she's in the classroom, teachers are hearing the message, and they can follow up on it all year long. Yeah, I, I was going to ask something else. I'll throw it out there, but I don't, I don't want to get into a lengthy conversation now, but I think we've, we've talked about social-emotional learning a lot, at least from a committee perspective, as something that's... Um, a bit of a resource drain for us, you know, a, a problem that has to be addressed. It's, it's cost us some resources, but I, I think I would expect in the, in the long term, as you address it, it, it ends up becoming a multiplier where it's now not taking mm -hmm. away from your learning activities, it's mm -hmm. actually enhancing your learning activities. And oh, absolutely. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see, at, you know, what, you know, is there a tipping point that, that we're going to reach? Have we reached it? Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe it's a, a conversation for the fall or even over the summer to kind of go into a little more detail on that just to kind of see where we are in that kind of continuum of addressing social and emotional and how much further do we have to go before it becomes, again, mm -hmm. more of a strength for us than something that, that we're, you know, maybe it's fires that we're trying to put out or sure. whatnot, and, and so, I so one yeah. That, I think what we're going to start seeing is a lot more of the social emotional piece embedded in curriculum. Yeah, which I, I right. thought that was so awesome. Yeah, that that's, this is, this is yeah. going to be, they're yeah. going to work together in a parallel, parallel manner. Yeah. It's like when, when, when the new standards came out, you started seeing more and more of those things being embedded in the, in the textbooks and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Romano. Okay, so the high school. Um, the first goal, the student learning goal, it's the same goal as last year, which it's a 25% reduction in students not meeting proficient on our MCAS scores or end of year benchmark assessments, which would kind of be for those subjects that don't have uh, an MCAS test. The performance targets under the first objective, we did hit those. Those are this year's targets and we did hit them. So we were pretty pleased with that, but that basically that comes into our data analysis and then the adjustments that the, the staff make to the curriculum and then the deliberate effort that they make for the review. Um, some other highlights under that, um, we want to expand, we call it academic success this year, uh, it was our program for uh, freshmen who were non-IEP students to get some academic support. Uh, we want to expand that. Uh, we had a lot of success piloting it this year, pr particularly in uh, a focus on teaching study skills. We're changing the name of it, though, to Freshman Transition because uh, a lot of the freshmen who are in it this year wanted to stay with it, and I don't have the staff to run it for two grades. So we don't have the staff to run it for one grade, but we, um, you know, I, I think that there was some sex, a lot of success that came out of that, so we want to continue that. We're also going to expand our co-teaching. We're going to double it. We had four co-taught sections this year with a, a collaboratively taught uh, courses this year. Collaborative, uh, yes, well, Collaborative uh, instruction that we're of using. having a general ed teacher with a special education teacher. So we'll have eight sections of it next year. Um, and it'll be in all five core subjects. There'll be um, some co-taught courses. We're going to revise some of the, the flex out process, basically how our students in the flex center flex out. Right now there is a perception among the kids, well if I flex out of class I can go back and kind of hang out with my friends. We want to kind of make that so that no they're going to go someplace and they're going to work. So if they want to go back and there's a study hall or something going on, they can't just sort of go in and integrate themselves into that. Uh, try to 
continue to promote that idea that you still need to complete the work even if you're not able to be in class, but still give them the avenue to leave if they need to leave. And then um, out of my school council, actually, they wanted to maybe find a way to focus on promoting student reading, which could include that summer component, like you had said. So uh, I want to put together a task force now that I have a librarian, and we'll put her to work on, on some literacy things and develop initiatives to enhance student reading outside of the classroom. And so we threw around a few ideas like book clubs or student, or rather teacher book recommendations, um, how we use the library's budget to bring in kind of high interest literature for kids, things that, that students might want to read, those types of things. For our professional practice goal, it's to enhance professional collaboration among the staff. Um, so some of this includes uh, professional development and collaborative um, strategies among teachers like lesson study. Uh, learning walks, things like that, to uh, create a calendar of opportunities for staff to present to each other. So at, at staff meetings, I'd like to have uh, five or ten minutes where a staff member can share a strategy that they use. We, we did that a little bit with like the co-teaching this year, the collaborative instruction. We did that a little bit with how people were using Google Classroom and other um, uh, online tools. And uh, I think that went over pretty well, and I think teachers, they, they liked having that opportunity. Um, we're going to do some more deliberate work on our writing across the curriculum to support the new MCAS writing requirements. There's now three types of writing that they have to do on the MCAS ELA test, and we want to make sure that we hit that up, but English can't be the only one that's teaching those. So like, so we want more of the argumentative writing and that deliberate process to be done by social studies, for example, the step procedure um, for that to be done deliberately by the science department. For our, um, the, on our general school improvement goals, uh, develop and implement new programs and curriculum to expand or create new college and career readiness opportunities. Basically, it's the new opportunities that we're making for kids. Um, had to cut back the ambition a little bit with budget. We're still implementing the early college program for next year. We're, I have a meeting next week with um, Uxbridge and, and QCC to kind of look at some other avenues that we can do with that, along with um, some articulations with Bentley College that we're working on. We're going to pilot the Pathways program, and that was, sort of, that was the program that's basically uh, it's like having a major in high school to kind of focus a kid in and, and sort of recognize when kids are taking those extra classes and doing those extra things and try to promote um, and reward that extra work that they're doing. And then we'll need to revise the um, social studies pathway this year. They've changed the frameworks on us and we're still waiting to hear on the science changes. The last thing under there is cross-curriculum work. This was something that the NIAS team um, really highlighted is something that we need to do to have more opportunities for different departments to work together. Um, so I've come up with some ways that we can factor that in and create planning time for people. That's really the thing that is a barrier to it is, you know, all my English teachers are off one period, all my history teachers are off another period, so to collaborate we have to give them some time. Um, the next school improvement goal is enhance uh, social and emotional wellness. We piloted a peer mentor program to help with um, students with the social transition from middle school to high school. Um, this year, um, actually, um, we had a student who has their student, um, their senior project, they developed a new program and she's recruited all kinds of kids and we've got some training lined up to have peer mentors for next year just to sort of help as new kids come in to, to kind of get them acclimated to the building. We're launching the unified sports program and um, we're going to do some revising to the advisory program. I, I gathered some, some um, feedback from staff and from students on what they most want out of the advisory program and we agreed the interpersonal connections, so it's kind of um, whether it's games or other team building activities, life 101 skills, sort of how to do a job interview, how to change a tire, how to jump start a car. I don't know if there'll be practical applications of those, but and then how to be successful in school, those academic skills. And then finally, facilities upgrades that mostly have to do with supporting these new programs. We do have to get in compliance with OSHA standards, um, the district safety plan upgrades that we want to put in, and then how we're going to use some spaces to kind of support these new programs. So how are we going to utilize the library to do those, um, the Freshman Transition Act things? Where we're going to um, create the space for the a plant science program, should that come in? We've got the art studio that I, we kind of cleaned it out with the flood. And um, you know, we've got that space that we can use. And actually, Amy uh, Stan went through and she looked at her numbers for next year. She has 41 Art 1 students next year. That's a 50% increase over what she had this last year. And of the students who didn't graduate that took Art 1 this year, um, I think it's 12 out of 16 um, are taking Art again next year. So um, 
really kind of excited to see what she decides to do with that space. And that's because of the Mass Corps that... That, that, that helped that, a lot. That graduation requirement that really helped out. With an art requirement for graduation in music, arts, and, and, and so forth. So, Yep. That's good. And then that flex out space, wherever it's going to be. We don't want to make it a dungeon either, you know, where we send them. So right, we need to have, right. you know, it still needs to be like a working environment room. It should so. be a regular classroom. That we don't want to put it behind the boiler or something. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Um, on the initial pathway, uh, do you have one already lined up? So we have three pathways um, that students can take either, um, they can take it with distinction or without. It's just basically it's the amount of honors courses that they take or AP courses that they take. There is one for STEM. There's one for, um, we're calling it Global Pathways, so it's sort of a foreign language and um, humanities focused one, and then a business pathway. Great. Other questions, comments? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I will try to get us through uh, the middle school one um, when I did talk to Brian, he said, just tell everybody that everything is going great <laughs> because I'm here and, and, and so forth. But I thought I would try to give you a little bit more detail as well. I so, can read it in his voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do all person. kinds of things. It's going to be great at the middle school. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, so his, his student achievement goal is that the Douglas Public Schools will continue to ma maintain its, its focus on meeting educational needs of all students, learners through curricular, instructional and assessment practices that inspire student engagement. Now, this goes along with a lot of the things that Brian has talked about in previous years, is the work that everybody has mentioned with regards to data collection and, and, and use of data for, for MCAS, the, um, the Northwest educational assessment tool that he used, and the data that that brings with it, and how he can use that to improve instruction and so forth. Um, the other piece of it is the collaboration, especially in the summer when we'll all get together and look at um, results in, 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 in areas where we've shown strength in areas where there might be um, areas where we can focus attention and work collaboratively to make sure that across the across all grade levels we're doing that um, he, he talks a little bit about executing collaboration with the high school and the elementary school as you know the elementary school feeds into the middle school middle school feeds into the into the high school and I think we have we have a pretty good rapport but as as, as is the case with the school year things get going and, and it's hard to make those 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 times set aside so looking to just set aside time where um, middle school could talk with elementary and I know they did some of that this year with the fifth and sixth grade teachers meeting yep. and I think um, th some of the things with the high school so the height and, and we have the assessments that we brought up that they'll review and then you've got the step up tomorrow which is a continuation of the right. stuff that's been done with the eighth grade and the different types of collaborations Brian did a presentation the other day before with fifth grade, grade parents grade before the deer presentation which was was helpful basically Our kids are going up on yeah. I think Monday for like a step up also to have a tour and meet teachers and everything so you know just looking to continue to provide those opportunities for us to to um, let parents know what the difference is between going to elementary and middle and middle of the high school um, the second, his second school improvement goal is related to his educational goal of uh, the literacy initiative. This, is, this will be the third year, I think, maybe the fourth year. The original piece of it was the writing across the curriculum piece and, and getting more writing into the classrooms. And as you know, this year he expanded it and he added um, the DEER program, which is the drop everything and read piece. And they did some additional things with math and um, as well. So he's looking to continue that literacy piece. Um, he shared with you in the beginning of the year the growth that they were able to um, uh, identify um, and that it, it was amazing growth with, with their students in the area of writing. Uh, he's very anxious, as he mentioned, um, uh, he's very anxious for the MCAS results to come back on the written piece because he believes that, again, he'll see a continued growth. Um, the DARE piece is a 30-minute uh, block that they have three consecutive days out of the six-day rotation where they get the opportunity to do more reading um, and, and it's it's uh, silent reading it, it has gone pretty well I've, I've, I've heard positive feedback from the teachers as well as the students on that so that's his second educational goal his third educational goal um, I admire his stick to itness um, stem we, we all agree that stem becoming a related art at the middle school is very, very important. He does speak to it here as to the, um, 
uh, career exploration grant that they did receive that he is looking to infuse direct STEM instruction outside of the science and math classroom instruction that already touches on STEM, but he's looking to also have it be a related art so the kids will have more exposure to STEM activities. As he says, break things, reassemble them, figure out why they didn't work and, and so forth. So um, he is optimistic and, and he is um, look very much committed to the STEM class being something that's going to happen. Um, we are as well, and we're going to be cautiously optimistic to see that that, that, that can happen indeed. Um, his fourth educational goal is to improve and expand upon um, some, the, a study of additional courses. So um, right now, looking at how he can better offer music, he can better offer band and chorus, but also um, maybe that music class becomes a little bit different than uh, exploratory music, um, you know, maybe it's music appreciation, the different components to it. But also to dedicate time for the band and to dedicate time for the chorus. Um, he talks about um, a digital literacy, which we implemented this year, uh, expanding upon that next year um, as, as another additional course that we've added. Um, the health curriculum, uh, we were happy to see that the first opportunity for um, high school health and middle school health teachers to get together took place, Josh, last week, recently? Um, no, last month. Um, last month, okay. They have another meeting um, next week. So we're basically trying to align health class curriculum 6 through through 10 so that the, we can eliminate the redundancies, maximize the opportunity to, to explore more, and, and so basically to expand the health curriculum that we expanded, uh, that we added this year, which was, which was a plus. And I should say, you know, from my standpoint, where I'm looking at it as a superintendent, I, I think the, the simple adjustment, again, that you wanted to go, you went forward with was expanding those from half time to full time. A, those teachers have become much more part of the school community. The kids gravitate more to them. They see them more, more regularly. There's a better connection between them. And the courses have worked out pretty well as well. The kids seem to like the courses. Um, that, that we're offering as, as a result of that. The administrative goal is a continuation of what um, the, the other three administrators have said. It's the social, emotional, and physical well-being piece. Um, you know, the, we, they do plan to use the, rith, the youth risk uh, survey. Um, I can't remember the last time we did it. I, I want to say it's probably three years ago. It's been a while since we've done it, but we have done it in, in numbers of years. Um, offered through the Metro West um, health group and um, basically it is just sort of a survey to see what our kids are doing, how they're feeling about things. Um, I mean, you've got the, um, the, the issue of social emotional and um, continuing to address that throughout the course of the year. So that's everything that he had in there and, and, and the fact that I didn't have much time to prepare it. I hope I've done justice to it and if, if not, we can always have Brian do some clarification a little bit down the road at a, at a summer school committee meeting if we have to but that was everything for that for that um, the one thing that I did want to add that <clears throat> we talked about today not really part of these uh, improvement plans is the re recommitment to vertical teaming and and, and and all that that means we've funding was always an issue where we didn't have the money for the stipends for the um, the leaders we really need to get back to, and, and Josh would mention, mentioned in the NIAS report, that was one of the things that they were concerned about is, 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 is the, the opportunity for 6, 7, and 8 to get together with 9, 10, and 11, and 12 in, in, in their disciplines to better prepare and, and again, avoiding redundancies and, and, and maximizing the instructional time and strategies and so forth. Um, Cindy will tell you when she was able to be the curriculum director that that was something that we were doing with some great regularity and we saw really good benefit from it. It also helped us to improve curriculum and revise curriculum as well. Uh, but because it has been sort of fallen by the wayside in, in some budget shortfalls, uh, we need to kind of go back and recommit to that. And I think, I think we're all on board on, on that piece of it. So you should be hearing a little bit more about that next year, which is, which is aligned to all of these things when we talk about curriculum and, and, and so forth, um, that we, we, get a better, we get a better opportunity for people to collaborate, which right now is, has not been um, as successful. We did some this year, but not to the extent that we were doing it five, six years ago. Not even close. So 
that was the middle school and that input. I so think. a semi related question for you, Neely. I guess, do, 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 I, are you satisfied with, I guess, your input to these plans? And I'm, and I'm wondering, should there be a separate plan for overall student services, I guess, that's presented along with these? I know we, we, we talk a lot about your, your kind of area of expertise and, and, and you know, what, what you manage for the district and just, I'm, I'm trying to tie that all together with our, with our school improvement plans as well and just, I don't know if there's an opportunity either in the future or if it's already happening, it's just not being presented at the same meeting, so it just, it's, I'm not making that connection. If you'd like to, sure. Um, what was I just gonna say? I'll get a chair. Just kidding. <laughs> Can I have <laughs> There's something I was, going to, I was going to add to that, Brett, that you mentioned. And it, just, it just went out the window. Okay. Maybe we'll come up as we go. Come back so. talk a little bit. Oh, it came back to me. So before Neely does talk, yeah. so you're going to see that the um, the goals in, 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 in plan that I put in, I, gave, I presented at the beginning of the year, earlier this year, a lot of this is tied into that, and, and that's the, the commonality there that we're really looking for, um, especially the data piece, especially the... Um, social emotional piece that everybody seems to have right. in there, the communication piece and so forth. Those are all tied into the goals that I provided as well in the beginning, earlier in the year. Yeah. No, I def definitely saw those themes. And again, I, I think I see some of the themes that you've talked about over, yeah. over the years as well in this. And just, I just wonder if, you know, make sure we, we all feel comfortable that it's all tied together and do we have more opportunities to, to kind of even tighten it up even more. So. Absolutely. So, you know, I, th I think when you're talking about student support services huh. and, and the areas that I do talk about, um, all of the students within every school, whether they be, you know, um, special education students or general education students, they're all students within a school. Right. Um, so these, what, what they've created encompass every single student, and there's a high level of collaboration that goes in, into everything that we do. So, um, you know, these are based, these goals are based off of, like Kevin was just talking about, the data that we're seeing, the things that we're seeing is, you know, when we do needs assessments, sort of sort of things and like that. Um, so if I was to say, you know, should I do a separate report? If that's something that you guys requested and you wanted, I certainly could do something like that. Do I think that these represent all of the students within the school community? Yes, I do. Um, you know, especially now having that, that social emotional component because that, that's becoming, yeah. like and I, I said, and I, and I guess what I'm almost. referring to, yeah, and I, I, know, I know we're addressing that piece, but I, I know we've, we've kind of restructured um, some of the areas this year and just, you know, are, are there more goals in those areas, more work to do there, you think, with regards to kind of restructuring some of our special education learning or whatnot, and again, should there be a separate document that addresses yeah. that, or do you feel it's addressed well enough it, within these plans, I, I guess? Absolutely. So, like, if you look at our yeah. scheduling goal, yep. that, that directly ties to what we're doing okay. with the additional sped teacher that we added yep. in the middle of the year, changing our whole model, setting up a plan that better meets the needs of our general education students and our special education students. Yep. Um, when we're talking about instructional strategies, a lot of that is co-teaching, mm -hmm. um, without saying co-teaching, right. um, collaborative, it, it, collaborative instruction, instruction yep. um, and active engagement strategies that work for our, our students to have different learning needs. You know, we can't just sit and direct instruct our kids all day, every day. We have to use different modalities and allow students to learn in different ways. And so that's a lot of what we're doing. It's embedded in there, yep. but it's also through collaboration with what our special mm -hmm. education needs, what our, um, our L students, even though they're few and far between, we have some and they have needs also. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to meet the needs of all of our students, and it is through collaboration yeah. with all the different groups. No, that makes sense. So I, I think yeah. you know some of it's probably some language that yep. sure. I missed a little bit to know that it's sure. all there. So that's it so I think like too because we're an inclusion yeah. district. Right. Again, it's it, the, these are all encompassing documents, um, and everything we do is is together because you know like the the point that we try to get across. Courtney and I talk about this all the time. Student support isn't just special education. Student support is is all of the kids. So. Um, I do feel that, that okay. these do reflect all the kids and, and all the needs, but again, if you'd like something no, further, no, that, I'm happy I, yeah, to I don't want to create work for the sake of creating work. You know, why so, not? Yeah. <laughs> Six more days. Yeah. <laughs> Last thing I want, but you know, if, again, if, if everyone feels mm -hmm. comfortable sure. that that we're you know again addressing. I apologize for these, by the way. I just realized I. Don't want <laughs>
Uh, let's we, we can look at that in, in for next year sure. as we get closer to this time when we get ready to do the improvement plans perhaps it might be just something maybe, maybe it's not an improvement plan maybe it's just a plan of what's going forward and how you sure how you're tying into all the all the schools and, so and that might not be a bad idea yeah. either because what we do you know again probably every month every two months is we really have to look at our programs and and we have to adjust on on a monthly basis yeah i think that's what i was referring to you know we yeah. did some things last year that were kind of on the fly not, not to say they were on plan i think they were things that were well thought out sure. but they were things that we hadn't hadn't put a lot of discussion at least for, at a sure. committee perspective and mm -hmm. you know just to to you know if, if there are things that you're already thinking of as mm -hmm. as longer term plans do we, do we want to document that in some way or Got it. again is, is it already being covered and we're i'm just not picking up on on the, on the language of it properly as, as they discuss it so no i think i think to date you know we're we're covered i think our, our program well, i don't think i know you know our programs um have really been looked at this year by by the principals the entire administration um, as well as our student population but as we've seen you know within a day a lot of this can change according to kiddos that move in you know and, and things like that 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 can change a program so those are the times that that yeah. we do need to tweak so yeah we can certainly continue to update on on those changes thank you well while you had brought up the idea of strategizing we did meet this morning and maybe we could talk a little bit about the strategy that you're looking to implement at the high school for next year possibly if the yep. committee's on board you might as well throw it out there if you want to absolutely sure you feel good yeah good who's going to present it <laughs> I'm happy to present it so we'll present it like together much like we did at the middle school um Elementary and, and expanding on the collaborative instructional model at the high school they've, they've, we've sat down and they've taken a really critical look at uh, at the personnel and we believe that with some of the student changes and changes that are going on that there could be the opportunity to instead of keeping those if we can move three paras out of the fold and add a teacher like we did at the middle school it's going to pay a, a really big elementary dividend. School. Elementary school, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, at the elementary school. Yeah. That, yeah. It, 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 that it furthers the plan that they've got in place, um, and we can still um, cover all of our compliance obligations as well. Mm -hmm. So we, um, you know, Ms. Arcart, myself, and the special education staff at the high school, we've, we've looked at the numbers a lot and kind of how we can um, make sure that all students are supported and bring in this position and sort of the nature of, of how paraprofessionals are in the district you know a lot of them are seeking other employment so we actually have three who are planning to leave so nobody's being told hey I'm sorry you don't have a job so we can make this a special ed education right. position so um, the basically the, the cuts will basically be through attrition um, but you know I think the value that you get our, our paraprofessionals do work very hard but again we tend to hire paraprofessionals who want to become teachers and the the great part of that is that they work their, their tails off. The downside of that is they're here for a year, maybe two, and then they're gone in a lot of cases. And so I think that if we can get somebody who is um, going to be more permanent, who's, who's going to be um, able to take a piece of the caseload, of the meetings, of the IEP writing, because one of the roadblocks we've run into with the co-teaching is that if, you know, if I'm the English teacher and my special education co-teacher can't be there because they have meetings and they miss two classes that week because they have so many kids that they're working with, um, it hinders that, the effectiveness of that collaborative instruction. So spread the kids out over one more teacher means that they're out of those classes less often for meetings and, and IEP um, writing too. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, and I, you know, w within the district, now we've had an example, something we've been working on since February is what we did at the elementary school. Um, it has proven to show great success, not only for the kids, but also for the teachers all the way around. Um, they do have a, a very dynamic, collaborative teaching approach that they have going on. Um, everything's improved. It really, really has. So. Um, this this is the vision and, and we talked about that a little how we you know school by school we sort of want to move towards this it's, it, it really is a research based um, way of teaching and model that has proven throughout the nation to, to have success for kids so school by school we do want to move to that and now again we, we have that opportunity um, at the high school level Josh did a really nice job with the special education staff helping them to to move to that collaborative teaching approach and, and did it slowly 
and um, sometimes in order to find the success it does have to be done slowly to do it correctly um, so we, we want to bring it to the next level now and each year if we can step it up level by level you know we're gonna get where we need to be so it sort of reminds us of back nine 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 years yes. ago when we, we first moved towards the inclusion piece of it yep we did it slowly but we we became a full inclusion school will remain a full inclusion school but with just a what we believe would be a stronger support system because of the classroom teacher being a certified special education teacher right sort of the next iteration of what we've been doing but we want the you brought it up, so I figured we muzzle no, at least put it out right. there because we'll probably be coming back in two weeks to to propose some personal changes. Yeah. Go ahead and make the make the appointment. Great. Any other All questions, right. comments, discussion? Thank you, everyone. Appreciate Thank it. you, everybody. Thank um, you. While while they're stepping aside, I should mention that Mr. Bell is uh, is uh, moving in to his permanent his <laughs> new home in Upton, Massachusetts, at the end of the month. Congratulations. Staking his claim in Upton, Massachusetts for him and his family. So we're happy to hear that. Um, how we made it to the finish line, we're not really sure with all that's gone on for him moving and all the stuff, but there he goes. Okay, now you can get up. Pretty impressive. Thank you, sir. Anything else, Mr. Means, for your report before we move on? Okay, you. so accounts payable report. Okay. On May 16th, 2019, I signed 11 batches totaling $64,378.09. On May 23rd, 19, 12 batches totaling $412,391.08. And May 30th, 2019, seven batches totaling $41,786.96. And nothing unusual. Bills, bills, bills. Been busy. Okay, moving on to our consent agenda. Our May 15th school committee meeting minutes. I remember this meeting being as long as these meeting minutes. It was long. It was long. Well, it was long. And, I, and I, a lot of stuff that we did with the re realignment and mm -hmm. yeah, okay. school choice yeah. with all the different grade levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Anyone see anything that's not in line with their recollection of the meeting? Okay. If no one has any amendments to make to our minutes, I would looking for a motion to accept our meeting minutes of our May 15th, 2019 school committee meeting. So moved. Excellent. We have a motion from second. Ellie. We have a second from Lisa. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Seeing none. Okay. Next up, um, our award for school bus bid contract. Ms. Keegan. Uh, the school district issued an invitation for bids in, uh, with bid proposals due Wednesday, May 22nd at 10 a.m. It was advertised as required on the state's good and goods and services bulletin, combines, which is part of the state's operational services division, town clerk's office, which Worcester Telegram and Gazette, and the uh, school district website as well. <coughs> um, eight vendors did request and receive the bid document, but of those, a few of these vendors were in the sales of bus um, they like to come around so that they know who might get the contract so they can sell them buses. So they, oh. <laughs> so <laughs> we're um, in the bus fleet sales business. So only one bid was received from Telstone and Sun, Inc., which is our current vendor, as you know. Uh, Telstone will be purchasing four new 71 passenger buses and updating the video camera system. We've had a few problems with the video camera system yeah. on a few of the buses. Mm -hmm. um, so he will, but he was waiting to see, you know, he wasn't going to change anything. He wasn't going to get, get, you know. Uh, get the contract so um, so the following was a bid proposal as I have delineated in the um, agenda item summary for FY19 total is 964 964,800 FY 2020 1 million 27,800 for FY 2021 1 million 90,800 for a grand total and this grand total that the bid is um, awarded uh, with regard to, you know, if we had other bidders, um, 3,083,400. Now, the bus per day increase from 19 to 20 um, 
is 8.33%. And this is separately de delineated in the bid document. It doesn't have anything to do with those totals, really, because when they, when they just to clarify, when they um, put the total for each year, they're actually looking at the structure that I'm asking for. In other words, so many 71 passenger, a 35 passenger with a wheelchair and, and, and different, um, and then a couple of sped, you know, one van, and, and they're, they're bidding on that component. But as part of it, we ask for um, the bus per day rate for a 71 passenger, a 35 passenger, et cetera, just in case, as I've said many times before, because at any time, always in the past and always in the future, we can um, reduce or add as needed. And it's our 100% the district's um, decision, um, buses. So that's where that the bus per day um, part comes in. In fact, I did leave with you on your desk, you'll see at the top there, and while we're talking about that, I had actually created this um, document in February of 2018, but I did update it. It's in May 2019. And this is just for 71 passenger buses. So you'll get an idea of um, it has a number of tiers. The districts that responded, and some people left out some information, as you can see, how many tiers they have, how many bidders they received. And of all the ones, as you see, that did let me know how many bidders, they had for the last time they went out to bid, every single one of them was only one bidder. We've talked about that being a problem. Um, and a couple of notes, and one of them did tell us it was 77 passenger buses. Um, and uh, one here, there's a note in the FY20 that went from three tier to two tier. But you'll see, you know, all the, the prices per day. It's more, again, about that add and delete. But it does give you somewhat of an idea of the cost structure, obviously. Um, so before this bid, I had most of what's on this list. Um, that I e that I actually presented to you, if you recall, when we did the renewal years, and we were, I believe, the second lowest out of everybody that had had responded at that time. But keep in mind, even though you know you might go higher, if they are so, if they're low, 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 the lowest for so many years, you know that at some point it's going to jump up beyond. That's kind of just the nature of numbers. What no matter what it is that you're looking at, um, but this is good information to have. Um, so I just wanted to provide that to you along with this, you know, this evening. Um, so the, let's see, so the FY21 bid amount is a 6.53 increase over FY20, and the FY22 bid amount is 6.13% increase over FY21. Now originally we had, I don't know if you recall, the amount that we had um, sent over to the town was an agreed amount of 6%. We just figured that that was a good figure to have in the budget, you know, so. It's pretty much fairly in line with that, um, except for the FY20. Again, they are going to have to buy some new buses. And part of the problem is where we only went out for three years rather than the other two-year renewals. That affected the price as well, which I, anyway, um, because he has to, he's paying off those buses for a certain number of years. So that does, does affect things as well. Um, trying to think of anything else. Um, so as far as who showed up at the bid, um, the pre-bid meeting was just, um, Vendetti um, in Telstone. And then there was one other gentleman because he was going to be the one selling, selling the no, buses, buses. So, as far as a pre-bid. But it is very common to, to have a number of different types of venues, per se, request a bid document. Sometimes they're just keeping data on bids. Um, a lot of times they're in the sales business. A lot of times they just want to know what's going on. Um, so you can't really go by how many people take out that bid document, as I have found over the years. Does Vendetti service any of the towns? They actually we know? do. Um, Vendetti does. They've been doing Uxbridge for many years, and they also do our Norfolk Aggie run, which is a run we pay a portion of it, but all the districts. It's actually it used to be BVT that handled the the whole bid package on behalf of all of us, and now I believe it's Men and Upton that handles that. But they Vendetti actually has that contract. And they have had that contract for many years as well, and again, no other bidders. Of that either that's just a, a systemic and that's not just a Massachusetts thing There's, there aren't that many companies out there so um, but you know I really don't feel that it's um, amount that's you know out of line in any way um, you know if you look at you know it is going to be the bus per day will be if we have to add a bus it will be I believe a seventy thousand two hundred dollars if it's a 71 passenger and I did request the listing from uh, Mrs. Sosha of all the kindergartens and the addresses. So what I'm going to do is once I get to a point where I, I have to kind of redo what we had before and move things around, the stops and things that would change. And then what I'm going to do is plot 
the um, incoming students on which bus and see how that will affect um, the numbers of, of students on the bus. Okay. It's a very preliminary, we yep. can do very quickly in the interest of time yep. effort. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's another whole listing that she has that are potential students yep. um, as well on there. So. Okay. Um, so I figured that would be a good thing to do sooner rather than later mm -hmm. yeah. to at least have a review of that because it may, the data may um, indicate immediately and we'd be better off, you know, we've got to do something sooner yeah. rather than later and we certainly don't want to be adding a bus and changing things around right like two days before the first day of school. So, mm -hmm. um, so. And if, it, if it's not too, too bad, it might be a situation where we all agree maybe we'll, we will wait and see yep. how things pan out at the beginning of the year. I think that's something that we'll all have to discuss when we get to that point and have that information. Yep. So are there any other questions on it? No, I just, just want to kind of tie up some loose ends for, for the committee. Regardless. So so this does reflect the reduction of one bus route. Um, if we had not reduced that bus route, so you know the 8.33% increase per bus doesn't mean the whole contract went up 8.33. I think mm -hmm. it only ended up going up 2 point something. I'm not going to ask you to quote the number, but I, I think it was 2 point something percent FY20 over FY19 mm -hmm. um, because of the reduced bus route. Correct. Yeah, if we really we can't the compare bus, the past to I, the new because well, there's a lot of other factors that were involved in this. No, I know, but yeah. I, I think we got to put it in perspective for, for the committee. Mm -hmm. I feel that's, that's important. So. Um, if we hadn't reduced the bus route, you know, we would have seen, you know, or if we have to add a bus at this point, we'll see, we'll see a full 8.33%, you know, increase year over year from FY19 to FY20. So, um, just to kind of tie that piece up. So, any other questions, comments, discussions on the bus? So, Ms. Keegan has provided some language here for a motion. I will do it. I move to approve the school bus transportation contract to Tellstone and Son Inc. for the school years beginning after July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2022, pursuant to the invitation for bids proposal of May 22nd, 2019, made by Tellstone and Son Inc. for a grand total amount of $3,083,400 for the three year contract. Second. So motion from Lisa, second from Kelly. Any other discussion? I got, I got a, a silly question to ask. If, if, we, if, if we were not to approve this, what, 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 what would be the... Courtney would pick them all up and bring them to school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, yeah. Um, what, what is the recourse if we said, yeah, this is, is, is there a rebid process? Or should we, we'd basically be saying we're not going to have buses if we weren't to approve this. Well, I'd have to go out to bid again. Yeah, that would, would take okay. a whole... Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just curious on the procedure. I'm not rec yeah. recommending that we do that. I'm just, again, curious. Yeah, because as you know, we were extremely late as it was. Yeah. I mean, and that, that also came into play with only having one bidder mm -hmm. in the three years and a number of other things, but yeah. Okay. But yeah, we don't. It's not gonna. It wouldn't be helpful to, to yeah. go even further out. No, yeah. just, Might not get any bid. Just <laughs> <laughs> Might not have any buses. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a motion, a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Seeing none. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Before uh, you go next, could I take this opportunity to thank Telstone and Sons for mm -hmm. their continued support mm -hmm. at the graduation, mm -hmm. running the shuttle for us, and helping us out with a few other things. Yeah. During Special, the course Olympics. Of the Special Olympics yeah, as graduation. well. So um, now, that they've no the bid, now that they've got the bid, I would like to thank them publicly mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. their support. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, we have the school lunch fees. If I can find one, I think too. We have Lisa uh, Lee on here from no? to, uh, I did? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've got another. Yeah, I've got a, quite a few things tonight. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So before that, we have, um, if you recall, I did say that I thought we were all set and didn't need to revote the budget, but yeah. um, we do. And it's only because of the transportation thing. So there's nothing changed in the budget. The only thing we're doing is just re-voting re so that Jean will have the actual vote and I can change my document because of your vote on just the transportation number. That's all it is. That's all it is. Nothing more than that. Nothing else changed. So the document that I did um, attach to the agenda item summary just has that transportation amount changed to what the town meeting voted, the appropriation. Correct. And that's it. Yeah, through um, Mr. Communication, we didn't end up getting the proper amount into the town meeting. Um, well, we, we did communicate the proper, the, the amount that, yeah, yeah that, I, I, that was voted by the yeah, committee, yeah. The proper amount was not, yeah. Well, wasn't put in the... Wasn't in the, yeah, in the, the town warrant. Uh, warrant, so. 
Um, but we're fine. We're, actually, while we're talking about that, we're actually not too, we're okay. We're only off by, after all of the bid yeah. and everything, it's just about $1,500. And it's not going to make, if we need to make any adjustment for anything, we can just do that special town meeting yeah. because luckily they vote one figure, which includes both the um, regular ed and the special ed. So Jean is fine to talk to her about that. We can just, that's absolutely fine. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, we'll hopefully, hopefully rectify that at a future date if if, yeah, if we need to. So. Yeah. Okay. Any any questions on this? Okay. Are you looking for a motion? I move to reaffirm the FY twenty twenty school department budget as outlined and approved at the April third, two thousand nineteen budget public hearing in the amount of $13,589,970 and appropriated at the annual town meeting on May 6th, 2019 and amend the FY 2020 transportation budget to $855,653 for regular education transportation and $702,351 for special education transportation for a total amount of $1,558,004 to reflect the amount appropriated at the annual town meeting. Thank you, you have a motion for Kelly. Second. <laughs> and a second from Becky. Okay. All right. Any other discussion, yeah. comments, mm -hmm. or questions? Mm -hmm. If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Seeing none. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Now moving on to the 2019-2022 lunch fee, school lunch fees, and we do have Lisa Leon, food service director, here with us uh, this evening as well. So if you want to come up to the table, Lisa, please. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I had submitted a proposal requesting an increase in the school lunch um, price by 25 cents. Um, that would bring uh, the price at the high school to 325 and $3 to the other schools. Um, I've also, um, I'm looking for an increase in uh, the milk price. So that would bring it uh, by 5 cents from 60 to 65. And I believe that this is necessary in order to um, offset um, increasing uh, food and labor costs. Um, and also we have not um, done an increase in the last two years. I think the last one was 2017. Um, and so um, basically that's you know, kind of what I'm, we're looking to do here for the school lunch program. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, so I guess, uh, I'm a, do, do we run a, I guess, I guess a balance sheet for our, our lunch program or? or okay. So uh, what I also provided on your um, table here this evening, yeah. I was just going to go over this quickly too. Okay. So you know how I always provide that school lunch financial historical trend. So actually Lisa, um, you know, took another look at it because it does change all throughout the year. So we're updating it several times throughout the year. So as you, you see the revenues, the projected column, you know how I always put um, in italics, yeah. um, anything that's projected until it's reconciled and, and audited and all. Um, so we have the um, projected revenues at the top and the projected expenditures. And as you can see that we are not meeting and it's, it goes back and forth. You yeah. know, that's just, it's, it, it, it's it's very common with the school school lunch program yep. to go things can go back and forth and you know obviously our enrollment's been declining declining so that's part of it um, so and it has been it was 2017 as Lisa indicated the last time that we did an increase and and also what I included um, what Lisa and I included in the packet I believe a couple of years ago it was the first time I brought to the board and I don't know who was on the board um, two years ago that if you look in your agenda item summary packet, we have a calculator that Lisa has to do with DESC. Um, it starts actually with USDA. And actually USDA provides that. We have to all, you know, follow, follow that uh, tool. So we, so two years ago we did it. This gets a little convoluted. It's, it's a state <laughs> thing. It has nothing to do with Douglas or us. But um, we did provide this to you. And we, you know, we, we review it and we review the data as far as where we are financially. Our fund balance is revenue, our revenues meeting expenditures. So what this does is, and the reason that they promulgated this calculation, which is a good thing, is that a lot of times um, throughout actually the country, school committees were very, um, reluctant to increase school fees so a lot of them went in the red they just complete the whole program went in the red mm -hmm. and it happened all the time throughout the nation so that's why they require this so even though we're looking at it and, and to be honest with you this does not indicate that we must do an increase 
But again, this calculator does not look at the issue of sustainability for any particular program because it's just a, a program. It's not looking at our data. It doesn't understand our program or, or anything or enrollment trends or anything of, of that case. So she does this, but then, of course, we have a discussion. We look at the data. We update our projections. Um, and again, it's been two years, and we wouldn't want to not do an increase this year and then have to do a large increase next year to make up the difference. And you can Basically, see that we're that already would having happen an issue we now. We probably didn't do anything at this point. Right. And actually, last year, the state had a problem where, um, and I did report this to you at the school committee at the time, because you were probably wondering why we didn't bring anything forward, because we do, we do so every year, is that they, we don't know why, they never came out with their calculator. Um, and she kept that asking. That was for last asking. school year, and they never did. Um, and so then, therefore, kind of it threw off what, you know, the, the calculation for this year due to the fact that, I mean, because it, it's ongoing, so we didn't have last year's calculation in order to put into, into this year. So it really threw it off, and it did indicate no increase, but that really is a false indicator. And part of that is part of it, too, last year, and I, we, this made no sense to us at all. We, we discussed this a lot. It made no sense. They actually came out and said um, that because they couldn't get the calculator thing out there, that what they did was they said that anyone who was in the red as of January 31st, six months before the end of the year, you had to do an increase. Those are the, those are the ones. Who and had anybody who wasn't didn't have to. It just was ridiculous. Really so, didn't make any And like she sense. said, it threw the whole thing off. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Um, but we're going more by our program, what we see, what the data is, aside from just this calculator as well. That helps. Thank you. So yeah, little train story. But do you have any other questions? For I have a question. I assume that I don't know that you would have bothered to look at this specifically, but I assume that we could estimate that the increasing the price will not qualify so many additional uh, students to qualify for reduced lunch fees that it's going to you can talk about um, how that yeah works. that would that would be that's no, based no, on right. a different calculation right. um, okay. USDA comes out with the guideline that we need to follow in order to it puts um, you know households by size and income and that'll that'll determine the qualification whether it's uh, free or reduced okay. so really this is this is separate from that okay no, completely separate Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, again, we have some motion language in the second page here. Did anyone so inform? I move to approve an increase for the 2019 2020 school year of 25 cents for the regular school lunch prices for each school, which will result in the following school lunch prices primary school, $3. Elementary school three dollars, middle school three dollars, and high school three twenty-five. An increase of five cents for the eight-ounce carton of milk to sixty-five cents, and the breakfast and adult meal to remain the same at a dollar fifty for breakfast, and three dollars and seventy-five cents plus tax for the adult meal. We have a motion from Lisa. Second. Second from Kelly. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Seeing none. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next, I have um, just one transfer. Um, this is for the elementary school. Transfers number 11. Uh, they needed some um, furniture, some filing cabinets, and, and, and items, but they did cover it within their, their lines. And that's the only transfer I have this evening. And also, I want to let you know that in addition to these, I did provide to you to go along with the transfers. Transfer. Um, because it's been a little while that, you know, a lot of times it's it catching up on the, the um, transfers, getting them posted and all. This was a nice, clean general fund budget report for the most part. Okay. So I did print you out and have a, a general fund budget report as well to go along with the, the transfers and reclasses I'm presenting this evening. So we just have that one. Does anyone have any questions on that one transfer? No. Nope. Requested by uh, Mr. Bell. Okay. Do not. So we're we'll looking for a motion to approve the FY 2019 general fund budget transfer number 11 for school committee meeting June 5th, 2019. So moved. Trying to make it easy on you guys. Motion from Kelly. Second. <laughs> Second from Becky. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Seeing none. 
And also this evening, we're getting towards the year end, so we're, uh, they're looking at those, you know, detail reports and looking for anything that looks out of, out of uh, place or anything. So that's what we have here this evening. I have four transfers. Um, so... Reclasses, right? Um, did I say transfers? Yeah. Yes, I meant reclassifications. Thank you, Brett. Um, so, yeah, so some of them are just a function number, is one number off. The first one, it should have been a 4230 instead of 4220. Um, the next one down, um, it was put in the dues and membership and rather than the, um, the professional development. Yeah. And the next one down was put under supplies when it really should be, because um, it, it was actually a repair of the score, scoreboard itself. And the last one was um, that, because this is a new account that, that Jean and I have created, actually, townwide, the furniture and fixture one again. Pretty much the same thing as, as Mr. Bell's for the transfers, that we moved it out of office supplies and put it into furniture and fixtures. So anything like filing cabinets, we want in furniture and fixtures from now on and not supplies. So we created that new account, and that's it for those. All right. I'll be looking for a motion to approve FY 2019 reclassification number 10 for school committee meeting June 5th, 2019. So moved. Second. Motion from Lisa, second from Becky. Should be to it, Helen. <laughs> um, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Seeing none. Seeing approved. Thank you. And the next thing we have on the agenda, I guess Lisa can come back up again. <laughs> and um, this one's a real quick, simple one, and I'll let Lisa just um, okay. explain how this came about. And this is the one just before Lisa, Lisa speaks, I had asked yep. you, um, Brett, regarding, because it's such a very minor change in, in policy, and she'll explain yep. how it even came about, that we didn't feel it was necessary to have a um, <clears throat> no policy subcommittee. It was very, very simple changes, so. Okay, so this was um, something that was found during um, I had DESE, the administrative review, uh, this past year. So they come and basically take a look at everything, um, you know, in, in the Douglas School Lunch Program. And upon the review of our uh, lunch policy, there was some wording that um, the reviewer um, didn't, well, wasn't happy with. And I, I believe it, basically the gist of it was, I think, in, in providing how we um, spelled out the, the food that we were providing. It was like it, we said or versus and, and if we said or, it didn't qualify as a reimbursable meal. So we needed to make that change. And I believe, hold on, the other change <coughs> was just um, basically and to just um, remove, uh, reduced out of that one paragraph and, and put it in with the, the bulk of the, um, the other students. So there's just very, very, very minor changes that needed to be made on the policy. So like you said, the part that, that was actually removed that you see crossed out in the copy that I gave you, yeah. mm -hmm. basically they said that it was covered in the all other students section, so we, we didn't need it there, so it was just redone it. And then very tiny things of, like she said, and instead of, you know, whichever is available, yeah, we took out the hat, took out the and, or, yeah. that was it. And that yeah, was it. And, um, Mm -hmm. And meant that it, it required that it was re a requirement, and or said they could have a choice. But yes, you know, so we need we need to always provide a reimbursable meal to the students, and so that was just kind of a little technical wording there that she wanted us to change. Right, which we of course do. <laughs> we just wanted that those couple little words just needed to match what we're already doing every day. Yeah. Yeah. So and that was it. Very very simple changes. Okay. So. This is our first policy change. We were yeah, so, so we're not, oh yeah, so I'm sorry. I forgot to, to mention, yeah, so. this is, a, I should have said yeah. that, thank you, Brad, I apologize. I should have said initially that this is just the first reading. Okay. And then what we'll do is on um, June 19th, we'll just have the second reading and basically the same thing again. And then um, right after that, if you don't mind, on the 19th, we can just vote it. Okay. Second reading and yeah, vote subsequent to that. So again, be, being a bit of a novice with this, for mm -hmm. first, do, do we have to have to read the entire policy out? Is that what a first reading is, or have we already covered the requirements for a first reading? What we just I did? believe we have. Okay. Like, yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. We're all set. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so do we have to? I'm going to read this out loud. Then mm -hmm. uh, this is the first reading of the policy change. The second reading and vote will be scheduled for the June 19th school committee meeting. Does that cover what we need to cover tonight? Yes, it does. Thank All you right. very much. We'll, we'll get better at this as we go. Yeah. We haven't done well, a lot of policy. I appreciate your asking so. because then I forgot to even mention it was a first reading, so I, I thank right. you for that. No problem. Um, hey, thank you. Hey, thanks. No thanks. Anything else tonight, Ms. Keegan? Um, 
Is the coverage will keep topics on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Topics not anticipated. Okay. Executive session. I think we're all set there as well. Do we plan on 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 the nineteenth? Okay. Getting together. Executive session nineteenth. Okay. Upcoming school committee meetings. We have our June nineteenth and then July seventeenth after that. So a bit of a slower schedule for the next month after this, which is good. Please break. Thank you everyone for tonight. Mm -hmm. I am looking for a motion to adjourn here at oh, 8 30 in the dot. Nobody wants to adjourn. A motion to adjourn at yeah. 8 30 yeah. on the dot. We have a motion from Becky. Second. Second. second from <laughs> Kelly. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Seeing none. We are adjourned.